burned down shops and destroyed churches, that's all that's left in a city once considered the Christian capital of Iraq. Hamdania was once home to more than 150,000 people and half were Christians. Now its streets are empty, its businesses are abandoned, and its churches have been demolished. Residents are demanding services and security to rebuild their homes before they consider returning to the city. The town was under the control of ISIS until October 2016. One organization that works to protect persecuted Christians in the Middle East says President Trump's travel ban is preventing them from entering the United States. And joining us now is Philippe Nassif. He's the executive director of In Defense of Christians. Nice to see you again. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Why is Donald Trump's executive order hurting persecuted Christians in your mind? So a couple of different points. One is that the uh, ban is a blanket ban on Syrian nationals, Iraqis, other countries from entry into the United States. There's no real distinction between an Iraqi Christian, a Syrian Christian from a Syrian Muslim. But, but, Donald, the but Donald Trump said that Christians will be given priority to enter the U.S. Isn't that enough? Sure. So the issue is, is that it's very hard to determine for the people at the airports, the customs agents who are meeting with these refugees, uh, what their religious background is. Uh, and so what's happening is we've had some families have been turned away uh, and sent back to Lebanon, for example. A Syrian Christian family in Philadelphia was sent back to Lebanon after they landed in the United States. What did they say did they, to you? Did they say, well, they told them that we were Christian? So they, the, the family told the, uh, the agent that they were Christian. They showed their cross. The man replied, well, you could have bought that in a market or anywhere. Uh, they were sent back to Lebanon. They're a Syrian Christian family that were seeking refuge here in the United States. We're currently trying to track them down and find them. And why, you can't, why can't you track them down? So the issue with a lot of the Christian refugees is that whenever they leave Syria, for example, and they go to a place like Lebanon, they don't go to any refugee camps because they're afraid of the more radicalized elements that exist in some of these refugee camps. And so they kind of just go missing or hiding. And then you um, can't help them. We can't help them. So they go back to Lebanon in the case of his family, and we don't know where they were before they went to the airport, flew to the United States. Now we can't find them since they've returned. So. The executive order that we've printed out here, uh, protecting the nation from the foreign terrorist entry into the United States that Donald Trump put out, says here also that um, in, this is on page 5, section D, for those of you who want to look it up on whitehouse.gov, I hereby proclaim the entry of more than 50,000 refugees in fiscal year 2017 would be detrimental to the interests of the United States. That number is almost double right now. Right. What happens to those refugees who are left in the camps. Right. So uh, basically, a lot of these refugees are in a really bad economic situation in the camp. They're also afraid to be there, even the non-Christian refugees, because of these radicalized elements. And so what's happening is they're stuck in limbo. They don't know when the ban will be lifted. They don't know if they'll ever be allowed into the United States. Uh, it's hard to find out the, the religious minorities in these camps, because again, they're afraid to register even with the United Nations and show that they are trying to leave their countries to come to the United States, for example. Do they get pressure in, in the camps? Is there, I mean, when I hear a refugee camp or I see it, it looks like a terrible, terrible place Absolutely. to be. Is there protection there or are there radicalized Muslims in there? So, so uh, a lot of the people that are in these camps, so we're talking over a million people that have left Syria and gone into Lebanon, for example, which is already a tiny nation, right, that can barely handle the four million people that already live there and the one million Palestinian refugees that already live in Lebanon. So now you have an additional 1.5 million Syrians, many of them Sunni Muslim. A lot of them, especially the young men, have been traumatized. It's fertile breeding ground for radicalism. Uh, for people to go and recruit uh, these young men to then either go back to Syria to fight or to go elsewhere. Uh, and so it's a dangerous environment for anybody to be in, especially the longer they stay there, the less hope that they have to return back home and the more radicalized people become. So the U.S. is now saying no more than 50,000 refugees per year into the United States. You are trying to keep Christians to stay in, in places so that they are sure. not becoming refugees, yet you're also saying right. that you want these people to be able to be refugees. Exactly. Well, well we, we ideally don't want them to be refugees, but in the event that they've left Syria, again, using Syria as an example, and they are able to come to the United States, some of them may have relatives here, or families here, or communities they want to join, they should be allowed to leave, and they should be allowed to come to the United States, which is why this ban is not helpful. It's a blanket ban on nationality. And so 
Syrians, regardless of their religion, are not able to come to the United States because of the ban. Okay, thank you so much, Philippe Nassif, for your viewpoint on the Trump travel ban. He's the executive director of In Defense of Christians. Thank you very much.